Howdy doody everybody, my name is Kev Gooey and welcome back to the Shadows of Pygmalion. Missed the last episode, you can click on the eye on the top of the video to watch the previous episode to get caught up. Outside the windows, beyond the school gate was a tall woman. She was sharply dressed in a black fur coat above a crimson Chinese dress. She stood quite far away, but her gaze fell straight into my eyes. Mina. I heard Makoto's voice. I? I looked around and saw the classroom as it always was. Everyone was looking at me, clearly concerned. I am going crazy. I think I'm gonna go crazy here, huh? The world grew dim and I fell unconscious, dropping to the floor. Um... What's going on? Around the bed were cream-colored curtains. Faint sunlight fell through the thin fabric. This is... My bedroom. In space. The sick room. A tall woman in a white coat was looking at me. Katsura Tuko was a school doctor. She was very popular and the students simply called her Tuko. I tried to move, my head still felt very heavy. Unreasonable diet? What kind of unreasonable diet am I on? Really? Whoa. My mind flashed back to the scenery I saw in the classroom, and I remembered the piercing eyes of the Chinese woman beyond the school gates. That was... Who? Hugo sat down on the round chair beside the bed. The silence was deafening. I had to talk. I lowered my eyes and gripped the sheets. There, I said it. Sound like crazy talk even to myself, but Tuko didn't laugh. Stop making assumptions. Hugo looked at me with worry. Her cheeks were stiff. No, I can't talk about it after all. I took my head softly and relented. Oh no, you're kind of judging me. I'm not sure. 
Hugo wrote something in her notebook and gave it to me. In what? Paige said, They run University Hospital Manawa Yukido and included a telephone number. I put the folded note into the pocket of my skirt. I looked at the clock in the sick room and realized it was already noon. Sounds good. Someone threw open the curtains like tearing paper. Whoa, calm down, I'm okay. Makoto fell in my bed with exhaustion. Do not worry, the world has not changed. Hmm, something's off. Hmm. Well, I guess we are, you know, skipping school. I decided to go to the afternoon lessons. Never mind. Returning to the classroom scared me a little, but I really didn't want to be alone. Yet every time other people appeared around me, my feelings of discomfort resurfaced. The other students I passed in the hallway felt dirty. More than anything, Makoto beside me was a vexing existence. Students are dirty in this school now? Oh my goodness. I must be going insane. That's what I said. Something is wrong with my senses. When I got back to the classroom, my classmates looked at me with concern. I'm okay now. I wanted to vomit. Felt like I was being dunked in filth and smelled a rotten stench in the classroom. Grimy voices clung to my skin. It took everything to crack a smile. What's going on? I took my seat and looked through the clear sky outside. You want something beautiful to touch you? I? Oh, her. Suddenly my mind flashed back to Ruka. The turmoil in my mind abated as I thought of Ruka. The pale light of purity was cleansing the dirty classroom air with my defiled body. So Mina has a defiled body. A dirty, defiled body. Got it. I'm still confused though. I remembered her, co her hard, cold lips and with my fingertip touched my own lips. Ah, I had seen a beautiful plane when I was with her. A world of stainless purity. Oh, I wanted to go there again. I heard a ringing sound in my head like the sound a wine glass makes when you follow the rim with your finger. The sound of a thin silver thread quivering in darkness. I lost myself in the sound I heard, like a silkworm spinning its cocoon, I sent out those countless silver threads. None of my classmates seemed to notice. The threads filled the classroom and left it through cracks in the windows, the ceiling, and the walls climbing toward the heavens. Sound echoed through the mansion. Ruka's glass coffin vibrated, then sang, then sang in concert with a high note. The stained glass atrium shook gently in resonance. A girl lying on her stomach on the couch and surfing on a tablet turned her head toward the balcony and looked outside. Where's she? She's new. Countless invisible silver threads wafted through the air. Who's Jessica? This is forbidden. Forbidden what? What's forbidden? 
They don't know what's going on. Who's doing this spell? Red high heels stopped among the Chinatown crowds. The woman's sharp and clever eyes were forced up toward the sky and the thread stretching through it. <gasps> Are we doing that? Are we doing this ability? Bloom filled the glass coffin. Luca's long eyelashes twitched in her lips opened slightly as though to take in air. Her porcelain fingers moved in her eyelids or slowly opened. Luca sat up in her coffin. I'm gonna end the episode here everybody. Something is going on here. Something is definitely going on and we're performing a ritual that is forbidden now by accident. No idea what's going on, but we'll probably find it out in the next episode of The Shadows of Pygmalion. So if you guys enjoyed this episode, then please slime that like button and subscribe down below for more awesome videos. Thank you everybody for watching this episode, and you will hear me in the next one. Goodbye!